Traditionally, we design in a rectangle. And that rectangle has a subterranean geometry. It has its own ordered relationships. First of all, we have a pair of vertical lines and a pair of horizontal lines. And where they intersect, we're going to call those eyes. Those are implicit. So those eyes relate to one another horizontally and vertically. And on the diagonal, they divide this in half. And if we divide this horizontally to establish an echo of that, and vertically to echo this, all of these rectangles have the same proportion as the mother. Any rectangle that has the same angle of a di diagonal is the same proportion. So if this measures one by one and a half, which would be a 1.5 rectangle, these measure one by one and a half as well. And if I continue breaking them down, they will continue to divide accordingly. So any rectangle that shares the same diagonal will have the same proportions, meaning that the shorter will divide into the longer the same number of times. <coughs> there is a system of design called the golden section, in which we have golden sections, series rectangles, and we have root rectangles. I'm going to show you one. In the seventh lecture, we will discuss it at length. And in the ninth lecture, we will ca carry on even further. But it consists initially of taking a square, finding the half, and swinging that down with a compass and establishing a rectangle that has the proportions of just about the whole of nature inherent in it. I don't know that I, I'm, I'm going to draw everything slightly distorted because I want to stay out of your way so you can see what I'm doing. These calipers are calibrated on the ratio of the whirling squares. And if I open this up this way, that pretty much does, <laughs> did I do something wrong? That pretty much gives us the square and the ratio. Do you see it? If I take the diagonal of that and I intersect it at 90 degrees from a corner and I bring that vertical down at that square because that will give us that division again. There it is. All the bones of my hand are based on that ratio and the rest of nature is. So what you have to understand is that early man, presumably I wasn't there. Old I am, but not that old. Early man must have sat in his unheated cave, lacking air condition or room service, with meteorites pounding the earth, earthquakes stirring up all kinds of havoc, wondering who was running the show. And he had to placate this someone, or a group of somebodies, these gods on some hill someplace. So he examined everything in nature, everything he could get his hands on, he measured. And what he discovered was there was a racial proportion in forming everything in nature and he assumed, presumably, that he'd decoded the language of his gods. Needing the cooperation and the protection of his gods, he built temples based on this ratio. He put altars in the temples designed on this ratio. He put vessels for libations on the altar tables based on this ratio. When he put effigies of his gods in his temples, they were based on this ratio because the ratio, the geometry he employed was in effect a prayer. All of Muslim art is based on these systems. All of African secret systems and mysteries are based on these ratios. The Egyptians used it, the Assyrians used it, the Greeks, the Italians, the Renaissance, everybody used it. And yet today, while most of the major older artists do employ it and pretend that they don't and will not discuss it, and certainly almost none of them will teach it in the schools that our students go to study in, younger students are not being taught this. And it is, in fact, the basis of Western, Asian, 
African art. You don't put a line down unless you know where you're going to put it in a rectangle. You don't put the line down unless you know how long it's going to be. You have to know what direction it's going in. Is it the Baroque? Is it the, is it the sinister diagonal of the rectangle? Is it the recip reciprocal? There are names and there are terms and there are systems and it'll be my task to teach them to you. So all I ask is that you do your very best to fulfill the assignments. I will tell you when you do something that's wrong because I understand you're here wishing to improve your work. And when you bring your homework in, we're going to put it on that wall. And we affectionately call that wall, which has recently been pristinely painted, thank you, Sarah, we call that wall the impaling wall. So you'll put your work up and I will proceed to tell you what you've done wrong. And all I ask of you, because I don't assume you know anything, I'm sure many of you know as much or more than I do, but I assume that you don't know anything and that my responsibility is to teach you. Unlike some art schools that want to make sure you're talented and then they neglect you, my responsibility is to start from zero and to teach. So this is where we're going. This is what we're doing. And I do require, as I said earlier, that anyone who wishes to continue studying with me is going to have to take this course twice because the volume of information I'm going to purvey is greater than you can absorb, understand, and develop skills with in nine weeks. No one can presume to teach you to draw in nine weeks. In 18 weeks, we can accomplish a great deal. And you've seen the work here, you've seen it on the website, you've got some idea of what students who've studied here have achieved. So I'm confident that we've developed something that does work. I'm going to show you a sequence of slides which I hope will reveal in an overview what I hope to cover in the next nine weeks. So let's see what we can do here.